Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for the Q&As, so let's go ahead and knock this out. Alright, first question. What type of training do you recommend for combat athletes? Conjugate. Conjugate. Now, that being said, uh, do we need to sometimes adjust the template for these people? And what, what do we define as combat athletes? Uh, as far as clients I've had, anyone who does MMA... Uh, anyone who does BJJ and anyone who is infantry in the military and active duty. And yes, I have had or currently have all three types of clients. So those are all combat athletes. All right. Anyone who's a combat athlete is usually doing a lot of practice, a lot of conditioning work. Uh, and military guys are going to run a lot. BJJ guys are going to roll a lot. So, what are the differences that we usually do? We, we have a couple of choices depending upon their schedule. Uh, we, we do less supplemental work for these lifters. Okay? They, they can't handle the training volume. In other words, you're not going to come in and do 10 sets of chest presses after a max or after speed day. You're not going to have them do a lot of supplemental squatting. Now, we could argue, well, shouldn't they be doing a little bit of extra squat work of some type or some quad work, in, in theory, but these are usually people who their workloads outside of the gym are too high, so I don't give them squatting generally outside of their max work and their speed work, so that means they're going to have dynamic effort squatting on a box. Now, if they're combat athletes, I really prefer they have access to bands first, and if not, then chains. Uh, sometimes they have to do straight weight if that's what they have. But you make it work. But preferably, you want bands for, for combat athletes. Because again, we could argue, people will argue, well, powerlifting is not a speed strength sport. Yeah, well, kickboxing is. All right? Being in the military is. Being a boxer is. Those are all, all have an enormous potential speed strength component. You need power. But outside of that, uh, we tend to scale the supplemental work back. Okay? I don't have them do, sometimes depending on what they're doing, uh, depending on what their training looks like and their practice and their conditioning looks like, we definitely scale back total squatting and leg work and focus mostly on just posterior chain outside of the speed and max work. Uh, sometimes we have to limit total supplemental pressing. But we can focus a little more on auxiliary things. You know, you can focus a lot more on things like triceps and hamstrings and stuff with some of these guys. You just can't push them with very high volumes on the big barbell lifts. And your other option is to sometimes take them to a three-day template. And when I say three-day, that means we still do upper, lower, upper, lower. We just spread it out. We would do the exact same conjugate type template, but you spread it out to three times a week instead of four so that the, normally the fourth day catches up later so it ends up being approximately a 10 day split instead of a seven day split and, and that's kind of your other option with these people and and i find that this works very very well with with my lifters personally and i can't speak to what anyone else is out there doing i've had good results with my lifters doing this all right next question been doing conjugate for over a year now. All my max squat and deadlifts are consistently going up, but bench and max variations have stalled. It's been like this for the eight-week cycles already. Wow. Might have been three eight-week cycles. I've been throwing in more accessories for tries, but I can't find what works yet. Good mornings work amazing, and I feel that is what's fueling my lower progression. FYI, I fail off the bottom on the bench. Thanks, coach. Okay. Uh... Actually, I'm glad that the good mornings are helping, and I, I find the same thing, too. I find that with a lot of my lifters, if we just hammer the good mornings really, really, really hard. And when I say hard, I mean I'm, I'm talking my lifters, a lot of my guys are, are up to 300 plus pounds for their 10 rep sets. Okay? Some of my sub-200 pound guys, I'm not even talking about heavier weight guys either, works well. But let's talk about your situation. Uh, you're failing off the chest. You need more speed work with accommodating resistance will help. But we need to look at muscular development at that point. If you've been beating your triceps, beating your triceps, and your bench is still just failing off the bottom, I'm not saying more triceps won't help you, but it's clearly not working. What do we need to do? You need more lat and you need more pec. Okay. 
failing off the bottom, uh, we, we need to be looking at potentially more dips, more floor press, more rows, possibly some pull-ups. I, I like a lot more rows because we, we need the upper back for that too. But it might be time for you to look at your, your entire upper back also. And I would say when, when you look at what your bench is, how big is your upper back? How big are your traps? How big are your lats? Okay, that's going to power you out of the bottom a lot. As far as all your support musculature and the ability to spring. Okay, the other thing we need to be looking at then is, is pectorals themselves. I mean, if you are failing directly off the chest and not getting stronger, but your triceps are getting stronger, well, clearly you're not getting the bar moving enough for your triceps to really kick in the way that you want. So it's pectoral and back that's limiting you. Pec is primary movers, back is support musculature and springing effect. You bring your pecs up. And I would say a lot of floor pressing, a lot of dips. Do you have access to dumbbells or a McDonald bar? A lot of dumbbell presses for your chest. Uh, and again, assuming you, you might be even at a commercial gym versus a home gym, what might help a lot, a slight decline for dumbbell work. Dumbbell chest presses at a, at a slight decline will help tremendously getting you out of the bottom of that bench. And look, I know that we talk about triceps a lot, and a lot of conjugate coaches and other people talk about triceps, triceps, triceps. And I'm not saying it's wrong, because for me, that, that does seem to be a big factor. But in your case, you, you need to be looking more at your pecs. You need to be looking more at your middle and upper back. But pecs probably first and foremost. Get in and hammer them, and you need to get them bigger, and you need to make sure that you're eating enough to fuel muscle growth in your upper body. That would be the other question. If it's been stalled for three eight-week cycles, uh, have you gained body weight? And are you hitting your pecs hard enough? All right, next question. Hey, coach, for those running a conjugate with limited equipment, is cycling through different band tensions on the box squat enough to overcome the biological law of accommodation for max effort day? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and, and again, you wouldn't be the first guy in that situation. And, and actually, I have guys who don't even have band and chains. People say, what do you mean anyone could set up bands? And not easy to set up at every gym. But even those guys, you know what I do? I rotate through three different heights of boxes. We do, sometimes with them, we max on a back squat. Okay? I'll occasionally make them max on a zercher squat. We do dead pen squats, and you can do those from a couple different heights. That stuff all works, but let's come over to you. Let's say that you have the ability to set up five different band tensions, and you only have one bar, and let's say you have a box with minimal adjustment. You could always add a plate to it, by the way, but let's say you've got a fixed height box. One barbell, but you got a bunch of bands. Okay, if you alternate a box squat with a, with a pull every other workout, and you have five different band tension setups that you could run, plus the raw weight, that gives you six different squats. That's enough for a 12-week training cycle. Right? That's enough. It's enough for a 12-week 12, 12 training cycle. Absolutely. If, if And any variation is fine. I mean, for people who have limited equipment, we literally just sometimes change bench grips, five different bench <laughs> grip widths. Right? This all works. Totally works. But keeping in mind, on your box squat, you can do other things. You can do pin squats. Okay? You can do pause squats. There's other things you can do also if you need to break it up just to add more variation. But absolutely, the band, the varying band tensions does work. It does work here. And it is totally a viable option. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys in part two.